BWN Productions, masks, busts, props, custom work. If you want something custom made like a mask, bust, or prop, hit me up. Fast custom shirts, hundreds and hundreds of t-shirt designs. If you're listening to this, there's going to be a lot that you're going to want to see over there. So head on over to fastcustomshirts.com and custom shirts. It's in the name. Hey, everybody, and welcome to what's uh, going to be another another one, Joe. It's going to be another one. How are you on this somber Monday? Well, Tom, I was just about to ask you the same thing. Uh, I guess okay. Made a uh, a trip first of all down to Austin, which we'll talk about a little later, and then uh, from there I went down to Corpus and did some stuff. Caught up from some stuff. We're moving into yet another shop, so did a lot of that. Uh, did some family stuff, which was cool. Uh, cut some metal. Got a lot of shit done while I was done there down there. So. It was pretty good. Uh, prepping for Texas Frightmare Weekend, you probably are as well, Tom. I, I cut some of these things, you know, and then a bunch of other little little knickknacks, you know, things that people might want to buy and put on their wall because you really can't do shit else with them. That's right, Joe. Yeah. I didn't wreck or anything on the way home, didn't run into a hailstorm, you know, Nothing bad happened, but I did come home and remember, hey, wasn't I supposed to pay something today? And yes, I remember, hey, the state taxes are due, and so I got that paid, you know? Well, I think what everybody's wondering about is nothing that you've mentioned and something that you have might not have mentioned for a couple weeks. 420? No. (laughs) How's the ants doing? Well, they're still here, Tom. They're still here after the exterminator came by. And and not only that, but since the exterminator has come by, we've since killed two roaches. So Lisa's going to call them back and uh, have them come back when, you know, while she's here so they can fucking spray again and nothing will happen. I don't know, Tom. I don't know. Uh, remind me after this, and I'll get you the name of that shit that I was going to tell you last week. And I mean, it might cost you a hundred bucks for the kit and a Hudson pump to spray it out of. Mm-hmm. But I mean, at this point, what's another hundred bucks to see if it's going to fucking work? Well, I mean, I saw a few, you know, because I'm watching them, you know, I'm just kind of looking at them now, trying to get inside their minds, you know, know thy enemy is what uh, Sun Tzu would say. And uh, yeah, I saw a couple going behind the backsplash. Is that what that stupid fucking, you know, piece of tile behind your sink is called? Yeah. So I'm going under there. Um, yeah. We had new cabinets done a while back, and it was like one of uh, Lisa's dad's friends that did it. And, uh, I don't think he did a good fucking job at all. But, you know, lesson learned, and we'll never call him again for anything. But I'll never let a white touch shit on my house. You're going to fix yeah. it? Sure you are, Cracker. Right, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I should have known better being from where I'm from, you know, but up here, that's the way they do things and pay exorbitant amounts to have shoddy work done. Makes me sick. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> I will never, ever let a white person into my house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pardon me. Yeah. So that sucks. <laughs> yep. But I didn't have to deal with it this weekend. <laughs> oh, well. How about you? Um, what what uh, excitement went through there? Another week. Still here, I guess. 
just uh yeah another week of oh what the fuck am i doing with my life god damn it i bought a fucking uh a bottle cap opener maker slash button maker like i'm ever gonna fuck around with that that shit's getting returned tomorrow dude <laughs> yep fuck that i'm not gonna take the time to fucking learn the sizes and fuck no i'm gonna go jump in a fucking lake with that shit wrapped around my fucking feet yeah so uh after this i'll put in the return for it and head to the old ups store yeah yeah, uh, probably just make a DWN battle thing and then send it the fuck back. But whatever. Had, had the person, uh, uh, the rep that they called reps or what they call representative of the company that I buy uh, supplies from, print supplies, you know, and they sell equipment too. She called me and man, really trying to do a sell on a DGT printer or some shit. You know, the full color printer things really what they are is heat presses they print out uh a film a heat press film and you know you just step it on the press but they're supposed to be good heat presses not not the shitty type of films that have been used for centuries and centuries and i'm still like yeah well first of all i don't have like 30 grand you know to lay down on one of these machines and secondly fuck that you know <laughs> fuck that i know learn all that shit and yeah you know and i'm sure it breaks down i'm sure you have to buy the fucking powder shit all the time for the colors and everything and nah i don't i don't know I'll, I'll hopefully you know i'll die before it gets to the point where everybody's using that you know and then there's no no more artistry or skill to it anymore yeah i mean that's fucking part of it too like the, I know it's just you know some people are like oh it's just a t-shirt but you know it's uh it's you're actually hands-on so you're transferring your energy into that fucking print that you're doing so <laughs> I mean there is some art to it yeah so, I mean I feel you yeah, on that but yeah I was also thinking like oh yeah I'm gonna fucking uh, I forgot what you said, but it made me think, oh, how long am I going to do this? Am I going to be able to retire on this? Oh, dude, you're going to be so dead before you even got to think about retiring. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, being phased out, I guess, is uh, the term for it. You know, a lot of people, I've got a lot of artist friends on the social medias that are really mad at AI because it's, you know, going to put them out of a job or whatever. Most of these people there, that's not their job. You know, that's some side shit that they do. That's not their, their daily. This is how they win their bread and shit type money. So most of them have no, uh, no real dog in that fight as people would say. And I am against dog fighting. So don't, uh, complain about that statement no i i love dogs cats you can fucking force them to fight all you want i could give a shit you know good luck trying to force a cat to do anything because they hate you you know cats are horrible pets uh yeah anyway tom i'm glad you watched a lot of stuff because it was another busy week for me i was on the road a lot and i only have other than the film we're discussing later one other to speak about well, Joe, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Let me put my glasses on because I can't really see it. Let me take mine off because it doesn't Which, matter. I'm well, no, you got to put them back on because there's something behind you. I need to ask what it is. Okay. Do you see it? I think it's over your right shoulder. Yeah, that one. No. The TV? <laughs> Tales from the crypt. God damn it. Do this solo on your own? Shit. Yeah, I usually do this Monday, though. Monday and Wednesdays when I do it. And since we've been, you know, recording on Monday and Wednesday recently, well, that's, that's why this is. 
partially because uh yes i we had another boy got bonus in which i reviewed the hit movie abigail you know so make sure to check the uh whatever video whatever thing and find it and blah 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 check out the comments they called joe <laughs> white it was pretty good <laughs> that was pretty funny <clears throat> pardon me so uh tales from the crypt season four no season six episode four operation friendship starts with the intro then the crypt keepers in his scuba gear talking like jacques cousteau and it's pretty dated you know uh god bless john cassier for being able to uh, do the Crypt Keeper voice mixed with a French accent, you were kind of able to buy it as the Crypt Keeper doing a voice. So that takes talent and voice control or something that should be commended, I'm sure. Uh, anyways, this episode is actually from the Tales from the Crypt comic. So again, doesn't happen often, but. Here's another one. Uh, it's about a dork ass bitch. He's a computer programmer or some fucking shit. He's uh, eating dicks at work. He goes home and has this roommate who's like a real obnoxious fuck party animal guy. And uh, you're just like, oh shit, is this like a split personality or his imaginary friend? Yep. It sure is. <laughs> and then the fucking nerd guy goes on a date with a lady and the fucking imaginary friend isn't having it. So the imaginary friend throws the real guy out the window and his personality takes over. Tales from the crypt. Crypt keeper comes back. He's fishing now. Says something about sucking dick in this one. Sucked a fucking dick uh yeah this uh probably because it's fresh in my mind but i can definitely see in this making uh the worst episodes list after i wrap this bag of shit up but yeah this was uh almost a fucking like are you afraid of the dark episode it was fucking lame and corny and just fucking fucking shit uh what's his nuts ethan supply shows up for a second but other than that nothing worth talking about this thing for so uh yeah that was that was that and check out the podcast that drops every monday because maybe you'll get more entertainment out of that than i got out of this episode it's right here on the channel or at boygob.com. So check that out or don't. Fucking Tales from the Crypt, dude. Jesus Christ. <sighs> All right, what do I got on here? Uh, I got a... Uh, this Blu-ray in the hit motion picture, Death Squad, aka Brigade of Death, aka some shit in French. Who released this? This is uh Mondo Macabro. Okay. Yes. Uh wow. what? Their quality. Oh yeah. I don't know if I would say that. I mean, the disc was reasonably priced, but uh, that doesn't speak quality to me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure all their discs look like that, and it's just fucking renamed. And uh, this isn't one where if you uh, pause your DVD player and walk away, you know how a DVD or your Blu-ray player will turn off. And then you can turn it back on and it'll start playing. Not on this one. And you can't fast forward through their fucking, uh, what is it? I guess their company logo screen that's like two minutes long because it's their logo and then like a bunch of fucking footage. 
and you can't fast forward through it or skip it. So as far as a quality desk disc goes, not really. <laughs> as far as a quality movie goes, yeah, that shit was fucking awesome, dude. Uh, they don't make wild ass shit like this anymore, Joe. <laughs> Starts out a bunch of, uh, oh, what do you call them? What do you call them, Joe? People, that's what I call them. But uh, a bunch of chicks with dicks are out in the middle of the fucking forest flashing their peckers to, you know, oncoming motorists and hopes of slinging that dick for money. Mm -hmm. But there's uh, some bikers in the shadows that don't take too kindly to things like this happening in their woods. They're not so, cultures, I've noticed, the biker types, you know? I didn't even know they had bikers in France. Well, I thought it was like a U.S.-Mexico thing. Yeah, you would think they'd be on mopeds or some shit. So no, they were, they were, uh, they were bikers, and they machine gunned these hoes down. Sorry, whores down, and I was a massacre, a massacre of dead whores in the woods that night, Joe. And then uh, we see the morgue with all these fucking people up on the slabs and shit with their weird looking anteater dicks just fucking there, and they're making sure to get them in the shot because. They're French and they're perverts, and it was of a different time. Turns out, uh, one of these ladies of the evening was an informant for the police. So now this police dude, he's gonna go out and find out why she had to die. And oh, does hilarity ensue after that? If you thought what I just said was funny, wait till the rest of this movie. It has a uh, it has enough for everybody. If you like uh, wild ass exploitation movies, I do. That, uh, yeah, Joe, you'll fucking love this shit. <laughs> uh, it's got some good gore in there. A fat guy gets set on fire, so you'll fucking love that shit. Uh, yeah, it's fucking, it's some crazy wild shit. And uh, I would highly recommend it. This was a blind buy. But uh, I was just like, yeah, this sounds like some ridiculous shit. So let's give it a shot. And I did. And it was pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. And it has a uh, English dub track on it. So that not only helps you having not to read, but it makes it a little funnier, too, because they're putting on voices and shit. It's good, Joe. It's a good time and a good watch would recommend i think i got that shit for like 20 bucks ship so i would recommend that shit faux show <laughs> yes joe yes well tom i uh as i said my trip uh this weekend started off in austin where i went to uh my buddy max's house and uh, together, we uh, Ubered over to the Alamo Draft House for the premiere, or one of the premieres. It's touring right now. Oh, no, the tour's over. Of Enter the Clones of Bruce, which is directed by your friend and mine, David Gregory, known for Severin films. But he's also directed a couple of documentaries before this one including the great Lost Souls and the other one about that other director whose name are Al Adamson. Al Adamson. There you go. And that's a good one, too. And uh, this one is a genre-specific one, Tom. Okay, so as you know, Bruce Lee uh, was responsible for bringing kung fu into the United States in a big way. You know, the movies exploded, schools popped up all over the place, and then the dude went and died. You know, he made five movies, I think, and then died. But the Chinese, that don't mean shit when somebody dies and there's still money to be made, 
well, we're going to bring some people in that look maybe just a little bit like him, you know, in the way maybe when somebody says, oh, your cousin looks a lot like you. And you're like, no, they fucking don't, you know. So they brought in these guys and they renamed them. They renamed them Bruce Lai or Bruce Le or Dragon Lee or Bruce Leung, you know, guys from all over the place. Hey, if you had a bowl cut and you could fight, you know, we're going to put you in the movies. We're going to make a big star out of you. And this documentary follows that, you know, it, it, uh, it starts off showing the influence that Bruce Lee had. And then it follows like five of these guys that, uh, that played the role and in, interspersed, there's a lot of movie clips and you talk about ridiculous dubbing the clips that they use on these, man, they are, they're funny. Just how badly a lot of those movies were dubbed. Uh, I saw a lot of these flicks when I was a kid. So this was a, this was a flick that I looked forward to seeing, not just because my friend directed it, but to me, it's an interesting subject. I don't know that it has the appeal, the, the mass appeal that uh, Lost Souls had, you know, because that was a big Hollywood movie. And, you know, it talks about a lot of people that, uh, that you know, you know, that, that are common names like Val Kilmer was at the time, Marlon Brando, you know, all that. So that's, I guess, a story that people, it's just more marketable. You know, and like I said, this one's very, very genre specific. And I don't know that you could show it to just anybody, you know, Uh, like I could say, hey, you know, Lisa, watch this with me. And she might humor me, you know, and watch it. And then from there, I don't know if she'd be interested or not. You know, I was Uh, people that are into the same shit that I am. They'll definitely be. It's well done. It's funny. Um the guys that they talk to, they're interesting and they're all like in super fucking shape. And I think they're all like in their seventies or something, you know, one of them had like the most gnarled fists I'd ever seen, you know, just from punching shit for most of his life. You know, some of them do some demonstrations and they're, they're still really impressive. You know, it could certainly kick my ass as slow as I move. Um, uh, it, it was cool. And the, the crowd there, the crowd there dug it. But again, this was a crowd that was there because that's what they want to see. You know? Um, yeah. We'll see when you watch it, I guess. Because it's not a topic you give a shit about. You're, you know, you're not really into the martial arts type films, Tom. But we'll talk about that more a little later when we discuss our feature film for the week. But, uh... But yeah, I thought it was really good. You know, I think David's uh, really found something with these documentaries he's been doing, you know, as eclectic as they are. And he just, uh, he has a passion for it and it shows in these films. Uh, At this screening, Bruce Le was there. So it was cool to see him. He he certainly speaks more English than I do Cantonese, so I'm not going to make fun of him. He had a translator there. Uh signed and took signed uh whatever you brought with you took pictures for free you know it's not charging like a 75 bucks or whatever the fuck a pop you know uh so that was real cool you know and he seemed happy to be meeting his fans you know that that it was all right man had a good time had a good time having a few drinks with david too before he had to take off and head off to the next showing, which I think was in New York. So in the uh, documentary, did mm-hmm. they interview the dude who played Bruce Lee and no, no retreat, no surrender? No retreat, no surrender. Which one was that? That guy wasn't uh, playing Bruce Lee, right? Is that the same guy? Yeah, didn't like dead ass oh, Bruce oh. Lee come? Yeah, right, okay. Thinking for some reason, I was thinking of uh, Kill or Be Killed for some reason, but uh, no, they didn't talk to him, Tom. That's a shame. That is, you know, because yeah, I didn't even think about that one, but yeah, that was definitely a Bruce exploitation movie, you know. 
that was the only one I thought about. Yeah. Because I have the shirt, you see. <laughs> I got it at fastcustomshirts.com. Hmm. Yeah, I did. old Matt, who uh, was running the Severin table while, while there, he says, hey, you should make a Clones of Bruce Lee shirt, which was a movie, an actual movie with three Bruce Lees in it. Uh yeah, Matt, that's a good idea. <laughs> you know, I was going to, but then I saw how many people were at the screening. No, I've had that on my site for like 12 years. You know? Oh, you have one already. Yeah, I've maybe sold like three of them, you know, but uh, <laughs> but it's on the site. Yeah. Yeah, oh. that's how it happens sometimes. Everyone also gave out a, a little goodie bag, you know, which uh, it had their catalog. It had the, uh, they've got a compilation DVD with a bunch of trailers for Kung Fu movies. I think it's called Films of Fury or something like that. And then they had like a little Bruce Lab mask that you could stick in front of your face, you know, while, while Bruce is talking to you or whatever. Just kind of confuse him, you know throw him off make me think he's walking through the hall of mirrors that bruce lee walks in and enter the dragon no was a good time it was a very good time will you, did you learn anything uh yeah i'm sure i did i can't think of it right now it was a bit of a rough day today but uh yeah just, just uh i don't know i guess about the the markets out there in China, you know, it's just like, hey, you know, they would rush productions on these week on these movies, move like like twenty four hours a day. They'd be cranking shit out, and most of the people working. God damn it! Sorry, there's a fucking fly. They would go from movie to movie. Like, if hey, if you're not filming right now over here, then go to this set because we're still working on this movie over here, and you know, pick up some shots or whatever. Uh, that's film talk. Tom, um, uh, yeah, just a lot of that shit, you know. Good stuff, Joe. Good stuff. Yeah, they somehow managed to interview uh, Samo. You know, Fat Samo, who was uh, well, you haven't watched Mr. Vampire yet, right? But he's in it. Yeah, and I got another one, Encounters of a Spooky Kind, some yeah. shit. Spooky cat. Yeah, he's in a lot of shit. He did a lot of shit with uh, Jackie Chan. I think they trained at the same opera house or whatever, but uh, he's a big name out there. You know, he's a big fucking star. So, and it looks like they maybe caught him at, uh, like, in the green room of an appearance or something. So, like, they were probably very fortunate just to get, you know, the amount of time that they did get with him. You know, uh, I know Jackie Chan was also like started out playing like a Bruce Lee knockoff, but uh, they didn't interview him. I would imagine it's very, very difficult to score an interview with Jackie Chan because he's one of the world's biggest stars. Yeah. May not seem like that here in the U.S., but yeah, he's he's a star everywhere. But, yes, I would definitely recommend this. I don't know what kind of... Uh, um theatrical release it's going to have or what uh but i know severin will put it out at some point so when they do you should you should get it i guess it's part of that bundle they were selling already so i don't know i don't know how that works i should ask david more questions about that well i'm glad you had a good time and i'm glad you liked the movie and i can't wait for the bronzy documentary It'll be a good one. I would watch that too. You ever seen this one, Joe? <laughs> Leviathan? I saw that in the movie theaters, Tom. Damn. Came Must have been. That, uh, the Abyss came out. The same day? Maybe the same month. Damn. That's probably unfortunate for one of them. Yeah, probably this one. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, not the first time I've seen this one. Probably won't be the last, God willing. 
<laughs> but uh it's pretty much uh the thing john carpenter's the thing underwater there's a mining station or a research station it doesn't fucking matter old fucking sticky bandit number two the skinny one he brings the thing aboard and thing shit starts happening and thing monsters in the water the end peter weller's in it i think that's the dude's name he plays a uh, robocop boy does that dude's head look fucking weird jeez louise he looks like a reverse progeria kid or some shit odd, odd anatomy on that gentleman's fucking head but who's it, the one there's got there's like like all these movies had a woman too I think there's actually two in this one, if you can believe it, Joe. Hmm. Uh, Lisa Ellabacher, Ellabacher, Amanda Pays, either one of those. Amanda Pays was in uh, Max Headroom and almost nothing else. <laughs> well, good for her. <laughs> Leviathan. But yeah, it's good. Not great. It's uh, If you like monster movies, check it out. I'm always a sucker for aquatic monster movies. So, I mean, it's it's good. Not great. I like it. Uh, it's, it's a solid release. There's a commentary track on it. Just by two dudes. Nobody had anything to do with the fucking movie. Usually I don't care for those, but this one was all right. Uh, there was an interview with Ernie Hudson on it. That was all right. Uh, Mario Lopez is fucking interviewed on it. I was like, well, that's fucking weird, but all right. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> that is weird. What was the rationale? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't give a fuck. I should have started drinking or something. I don't know. Whatever. I had planned to when I got home, but uh, we didn't have any beer, and I didn't feel like getting back in. Yeah. Who gives a shit? Sorry, seven people who listen. Maybe next week will be a better episode. It won't. Mm, we'll see. Oh, you didn't watch anything else? No. I watched this movie called House, but it's not the fucking any of the ones that we watched before. It's uh, some, I don't know, it fucking sucked. Who gives a good goddamn? Like, it's fucking, it has Bill Mosley, Leslie Esterbrook, Michael Madsen, and it's shot okay, but it's just like cliche and stereotype. It's just a, what the fuck, the most average movie you've ever seen. But I mean, it looks fine. It sounds fine and everything. And then there's the worst green screen replacement I've ever fucking seen. It's like a backyard movie level green screen replacement. I said, oh my God, ah, fuck this fly. God damn. And, uh, who cares? It sucks. I'm just going to fucking. It sucks. Who gives a fuck? They should have not used that green screen replacement. And uh, there's some really bad CGI in it that's fucking embarrassing. Just mainly because of, hey, this looked good. This looked okay. This looked like a movie. And then that CG and replacement just fucked everything up. And I said, I'm done. I just checked the fuck out. And it was dumb. Everything was just fucking dumb and predictable. And it was just fucking stupid. House, fuck you. <laughs> so did you watch this uh, streaming or did you purchase this one as well? No, it was streaming. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else, Tom? Yeah, it's fucking probably, Joe, but anything worth a fuck? <laughs> well, I got to kind of do this one right, because somehow the last one got over 100 views, which is a goddamn fucking miracle for us. But uh, hey, Joe, 
Have you ever heard of Dirty Harry 2 Magnum Force? I have. It's a great impression of the fucking uh You can almost feel poster. 44 Magnum, right? The That's right, Joe. But on Earth. Hell yeah, the first 18 minutes of the movie is just a guy holding that gun and his arm cramping up at him doing his damnedest not to fucking move it. And then it shoots and then the movie's over. And it was just, huh, well, yeah, that, that was it. How about that? Well, anyways, old dirty Harry Callahan's back and I guess he jumped in to get his badge after he threw it in the lake or whatever in the last movie because he's back on the force. Mm -hmm. Only this time he's in the stakeout division. So he just fucking goes places just waiting to shoot a motherfucker. Like that's his job. Just, oh, I hope a motherfucker robs this place so I can shoot him. Sure. It's a saying that they used to have, Tom, that's uh, fallen out of fashion. It's, uh, I wish, uh, forgot what they said at that point, would. And this motherfucker is would. Yeah, there you go. Sure. And, uh, yeah. What? That, that, what did you hear? <laughs> that's that old Harry Callahan has in this movie. I want to know what the fuck you heard, because I always heard it as I wish a motherfucker would. All right, we'll continue with your uh, review, Tom. Don't throw this off track. You you want to get that hundred views again? Right? Try it. <laughs> <clears throat> oh fuck! So, uh, in this one, there's a there's a young group of homosexuals who just entered the police force, and they're all good shots. And it turns out they're all a group of vigilantes who's uh taken out the taken out the crime with their own brand of justice aka just you know going around and killing criminals and uh old they're dirty harry again. the who they're making america great again i wish someone would joe i wish someone would <laughs> probably a black dude but anyways uh yeah it's it's all right <laughs> it's uh a little bit lower than the uh, first one but it was still good i liked it uh so far not as good or as entertaining as the death wish movies but it's nice that there's not a shit ton of rape in these <laughs> so that's a nice change of pace uh yeah, I mean, it's all right. It's worth watching for sure. Yeah, I like it. I don't care. <laughs> System, Tom. You know, the people are supposed to be his brothers that are supposed to have his back. Yeah, they got his back. All right, Joe. And they think, oh, well, he's just like us. He's not. That's pretty good. You should have done voice work on the critic. You remember that hit show? Ew, it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. I watched this movie called The Queen of Black Magic Show. You ever heard of this one? Not heard of this one. So uh, this dude's about to get married. And his wife starts freaking out and having hallucinations. So this dude says, oh, I bet it's, I bet it's my ex-girlfriend. I'm going to go slap the shit out of her and her fucking mom. Burn their fucking house down, and then me and the boys are gonna pick her up and throw her off a fucking cliff. Just fuck her. I mean, she wasn't, she didn't do shit. She didn't put any black magic curse. This guy's just an asshole. So they do all this shit, throw her off a fucking cliff, 
And luckily, there's a witch doctor at the bottom of the cliff and just catches her like it ain't shit. He's an old ass man, would have ripped the arms right off of him. It didn't. So he says, hey, you got to get revenge on them. I'm going to teach you black magic. And he does. And she does. The dude rips his own head off. That was pretty cool. Go watch that scene somewhere. Don't bother with the rest of the movie. I mean, there's some weird gore, Indonesian gore shit in it, but really, the only part in this you want to see is this fucking idiot ripping his own goddamn head off. That's pretty cool. He should have ripped his head off, then shoved it up his ass, and then the credits should have rolled. I would have said terrific. Best ending in movie history. But they didn't, so fuck them. The queen of black magic. Sounds good. No, just that one part. <laughs> You've established that. Yep. Don't waste your life like I had. <laughs> He's phased out. Uh huh. I should do a little fucking Shermanizing. I think that'll get my life back on track. I will personally attack the whack. <laughs> All right, let's get into this fucking weird pervert shit that fucking somehow I've seen before. <laughs> yes, we continue the films of the prolific Bill Milling. Uh, I always feel like I'm saying his name wrong. It just sounds weird, you know, and it's like when you spell it, it's like it should sound different than it looks. Or something. Yeah, I always want to say Bill Millings, like I'm a fucking 1960s black lady or some shit. Yeah, like I want to say Bill Millining, Millining or something. Bill Millings, Lee. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this time he's more on familiar ground with this film, Caged Fury. Now, this is Caged Fury from, what, 1990? There's... Maybe four movies out there named Cage Fury. This one is the Bill Milling film. And this is about a young girl that's about to go to Hollywood. She's going to leave the farm in Utah. You know, her sister's already been to Hollywood, you know. So her sister should know what's up out there. You know, give her a little advice on what to do, what not to do. But she doesn't. You know, she's more concerned with her dad, played by Michael Parks, who, goddamn, is this guy torn up about his daughter leaving to the big city, you know, and he's just got, like, like he's holding back ears as much as he can, but he does let go of a few of them. Goddamn, is it heart-wrenching to see Michael Parks deal with that emotion, uh, you see this shit, you're just like, fuck yeah, all right, Michael Parks is in the movie. This dude shit has sucked dick so far, but hell yeah, Michael Parks is in it. I mean, he's in a few scenes, mainly just talking on the fucking phone, but he's in it. Sure. He's awful. <laughs> he cracked me up with his fucking crying. Uh, anyway, she goes and... uh she picks up uh, some girl that was about to be raped by a hitch uh, by a guy she caught a ride with. I guess she was hitching somewhere. And so she says, well, let's go to L.A. You know, I got a friend there. I'll introduce you to him. They get there and he's a photographer. You know, he photographers his ladies, you know, in, in his uh, loft that he has a car in or something so they can lay on the car naked and and shit like that. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, I'll set you guys up with an audition. I'm Italian. I know people in this city, you know. And he's, you know, Italian. Uh, so they go out to a nightclub. Hey, let's go party a little. You know, and it just happens to be a nightclub that some uh, rapist biker gang hangs out with. Uh, she goes out to the back, and they're about to rape her. And... Uh, Luckily for her, Eric Estrada and his curly-haired karate buddy 
are there. So they kick the whole fucking bar's ass. Everybody in that goddamn bar, they kick their ass while a shitty glam punk band plays the entire time. Uh, yeah. Fucking purple haired fucking assholes. Yeah, so it's action packed. Action packed. Uh, anyway, the fucking next. Mexican American karate guy knocked the shit out of fucking everybody. Erica Estrada is just fucking kind of turning, making sure his wig doesn't fucking fall off. While fucking karate man's just slapping the shit out of these whores left and right. The next day they go to the audition, you know, and it's uh, some fucking uh, old Italian man, you know, just, hey, I'm uh, Cardabucci or whatever. Um, and it should be said that these people treated the guy who brought them there like a fucking idiot. Like yeah. this guy was just a fucking loser piece of shit. Hmm. And uh, but he brought him there. He's like, "All right, let's uh, practice, do your scene. You know, act like you're gonna seduce me." And you know, it's like, "Hey, you know, she she calls cut. You know, after she's trying to do a, an acting job." Well, know? she's saying, "Oh, come on, baby, let me get this job. I'll do anything." And starts unbuttoning the laundry and shit. So uh, it's uh, it's I don't. Dude, sorry, I just don't give a fuck this week. <laughs> I'm trying to talk like I give a good goddamn about any of this fucking shit, and I just don't. But I'm sorry. I'll shut my fucking cocksucker and let you continue. So, you know, they cause a big scene. Hey, this is some bullshit, blah, blah, blah. And they start, you know, attacking the, the uh, director gets in there so the cops show up and they take him to court and the court says hey well you're gonna go to the you're going to fuck prison for up to two years you know no less than three months and they take them to this prison where the women wear lingerie and there's a bdsm warden there that just so happens to be the judge that they saw you see tom this is not a real prison. This is a prison where they're going to discipline them and teach them to be good girls for whoever buys them on the sex slave market. So, yeah, there's a lot of nudity from this point forward. There's a lot of uh, uh, disparaging things. There's women fighting amongst themselves. There's some backstabbing. And you think, hey, this is where the movie's going to go. But no. We got Eric Estrada and Karate Guy that are on the trail. How can we do this? Well, the sister came into town and she goes, Hey, you know what? I'll go undercover. I'll go where she auditioned and find out what happened. So, this dumb bitch who's already been in uh, LA, she gets thrown in the same thing. You know, she's, you know, doesn't know what's going on, but yeah, they're. They're now in the prison together, in the white sex slave prison. And, uh, yeah, from there it's like, hey, how are we going to get out of here? Well, you'd think that Eric Estrada and Karate Guy are going to be uh, teaming up and going there and just busting ass. But Eric Estrada gets shot. He gets shot and he's out of the picture. So it's up to Karate Guy, man. And he goes in there and he just starts beating the fuck out of everybody. But he gets knocked down, too. So you think, well, the girls are going to escape on their own. You know, they're going to take over now. So he, you know, gets out there and kicks some more ass. And and they all escape to the uh, the Hong Kong Theater. You know, the, the one, the famous man theater. I think that's what it's called. Um, yeah, this movie's great, Tom. Uh, if you like exploitation movies like I do. This is great. It's not, you know, up there with Ilsa, which is probably the greatest I've ever seen. But this one has a lot of shit in it. That's cool. Uh, James Hong is in there. Is that his name? Hong? Wong? Something like that. But he's funny as shit in his role. The guy that plays his cop partner is real funny. Um, it's got some gore effects, which I know you probably appreciated, Tom. Because, you know, you're all about the gore effects. It's got uh, a lot of porn stars in it. So just about everybody's going to take their clothes off 
for a moment or two in this film and they do they do and it's got some uh surprisingly good theatrical martial arts going this guy who i've never heard of he's pretty damn good like his moves and shit are pretty impressive uh i'm surprised well he didn't have much in the looks department so maybe i'm not surprised but i could have definitely seen this guy as like a van damme villain or something you know you know that kind of role to where he would have still been a character actor but he didn't do shit i looked him up he did like a like an episode of airwolf <laughs> and maybe two other things so yeah strange i i thought he you know he had the the action chops for sure uh eric estrada sucks but that also it makes it uh it makes it funny uh i laughed a lot because there's a point where oh shit we're busted all the you know they're coming to arrest us they we, the jig is up, so they just go through and start blasting all the chicks in their cells. God damn, that was great. Uh, Paul Smith is in it. He plays a big fat guy, as he usually does. Uh, there's just a lot of, like, I know that person. Hey, look there. You know that This guy should have just been making movies like this, you know, all along. And he would have, uh, I don't know, they would have had him at Cinema Wasteland or someplace like that for sure. It's, uh, for, uh, I mean, compared to the other two Bill Milling movies I've seen, this is a fucking masterpiece, because it's actually fucking entertaining, but, uh, you know, the women in peril movies, I, they're just not for me, I, I don't know. Well, you just don't, like, um, establish that in the past. I mean, if I didn't, if it was that, then I'd watch this movie just like, yeah, yeah cracker in the fucking mouth so i mean that's the kind of shit that this is it's just like you're sitting there just like waiting for women to get hit okay sweet uh there's some good shit in it like uh gregory scott cummings he's always good and everything and he gets stabbed in the eye with a fucking fork so that was sweet uh fucking mexican karate guys fucking awesome Erica Estrada sucks. Like, uh, he's supposed to be like uh, a leading man with fucking with like a love interest and shit. And you can't buy that at all. That's like fucking get out of here, dude. Even if I had a dollar, I wouldn't buy that fucking shit. So, uh, I mean, it's good. There's a, it's a fun, like, it's not a fun exploitation movie. But there's some shit to fucking laugh at and have a good time with for sure. But yeah, these fucking broads are getting fucking smacked around and getting their cheeks busted and shit. So it's like, I guess if you're into rape shit, check it out. It's a movie, Tom. It's a movie. Yeah, I know. And it's all about women overcoming that adversity. Oh, I something. mean, it's kind of not because fucking karate man's doing fucking everything and they're just parading behind him. Yeah. And when they do get let out, it's all like wacky music. It doesn't feel like, yeah, we've overcame. It just feels like silly shit. So this fucking karate man can walk with a bunch of broads behind him and shit. And then he gets on a motorcycle, gets absolutely no pussy after killing all these motherfuckers. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, oh, it's great. I mean, this movie's just silly. You know, it's, it's fucking great. It's fun. Oh, there's nothing fu silly, Joe, about watching women get smacked around, sir. Right. Unless a clown's doing it. A wicked clown, you see. <laughs> hey, Fury, it is on Tubi. Give it a watch. Uh, entertaining. Very entertaining. I like the part at the very beginning where the Chinese lady, she was escaping prison, and she was wearing, like, a bra and panties, and her tits were totally tucked away. But in the next shot, when she's crawling through the duct work, her tits just happened to be hanging out. <laughs> and then I remembered, oh, yeah, Joe said this guy directed porn. 
that makes sense. Yeah, like most of the girls in the prison were were porn stars. Or porn people. I don't think any of them were stars. If they were, they wouldn't be in this movie, you see. <laughs> oh, and shit. Last week, you know, the, the star of last week's movie, Janine Lundemeyer, she was a legit porn star. She made a lot, a lot of money in porn. And uh, he did not put her in a leading role this time. Dancing around in that biker bar. Ah, uh, well, hopefully she's on to better things for us. She was not. So what's next week's fantastic movie that I can't wait to watch? Next week we'll be watching Body Trouble, which can be seen on YouTube. <laughs> can't wait. Oh, shit. Never even released on DVD. Mm -hmm. Oh, fuck. <laughs> hey, Joe, you a fan of Donna Summers? No. No? Why? Well, before I tell you why, Tom, let me tell you that uh, Peter Parker went to go visit... Uh, who's the secretary's name? I don't know what a secretary is, Joe. Anyway, he went to go visit her in, like, Connecticut or something. I guess she was there visiting the family, and she called Peter Parker. Hey, let's go to this circus that's here in Connecticut while I'm visiting my family. So they do that, and they're watching the freak show, Tom. And there's a uh, skeleton in the freak show. This skeleton, it turns on fire, Tom, and it's like... Wait a minute, I recognize that. That's Ghost Rider. He's under hypnosis or some shit from a circus person there. And, uh, yeah, so Spider-Man has to fight with Ghost Rider and get him out of this paralysis. And it's a very, very shitty issue. The only thing, it's got art by Pat Broderick. And he's got a weird cartoony style that I've always liked. Uh... But then, over in uh, Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man, if you recall last week at the end of it, the cliffhanger, Peter Parker Spider-Man's turned into the Spider-Lizard. That's right, he was infused with the Kurt Connors stuff that was in that little computer somehow. And uh, yeah, so now he's going on a rampage. You know, he's you know a lizard, but he's got the tattered remains of the Spider-Man's uniform on. And he's fighting the cops. He's fighting SWAT, and uh, Connors is trying to get this serum down his throat, you know. Swallow this. Swallow this, Spider-Man's, and uh, you'll revert back. And, uh, well, they get trapped it down in the tunnels, you know, like in the sewers. So what do you think happens down there, Tom? If you're thinking that, hey, those tunnels are going to start to flood... And they're going to be trapped by water. And spider mans is going to have to pull some bars out with all his strength in order to escape the water. Well, you're fucking right, Tom. It's exactly what happens. And, you know, after he's exhausted with that, Connors pours that shit down his throat and he turns back. But covers his face, you know, so Connors won't know who he is. And at the end of this, hey. Is it the end of this? Yeah, I guess it's the end of this one. Uh. The sinister, no, the frightful four, the new frightful four are about to strike. And I'm then, surprised they didn't fucking stretch that out for one more episode and cut it when the water was rising. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, we've got uh, Amazing Spider-Man's number, is this 202, 203? I don't know. But uh, it's got a special guest star this time, Tom. Dazzler. <laughs> Fucking Dazzler. The disco superhero that's uh, rolling around on roller skates. Stealing Iron Man's bit, because Iron Man did the roller skates thing for a little while, too. Uh, there's some light creature thing chasing her. Could it be the Will-O-The-Wisp? No, it's not. It's uh, the living light, living lasers. I can't remember. Flashlight man or some fucking shit. It was something fucking stupid where you're reading it and just be like, 
fuck life. This made how much money? Fuck everything. Um, she, her powers have to do with light. She emits light, so he's gonna use her as a power source. He's gonna keep her, women in prison style, shackled up, you know, and just steal her light from her, whenever he can. Uh, old Spider Man is out to stop it, and we got some fucking. I think Frank Springer. It's uh, doing his best uh, Steve Ditko art imitation, and uh, it's pretty bland. It's all pretty bland. This this story sucked. Just some fucking garbage. At least it's just a, a one-off thing. So that was good. I made sure to do a little preview of next week's, because I was like, oh, I sure don't want to read another fucking dazzler issue but now everything gets wrapped up so thank fuck thank fuck joe i think i grew up at a time where uh renting vhs as a bunch really wasn't a thing because at that time i think they were selling their copies all right, well, let's just skip and, the, that word. <laughs> you could, uh... Thanks, thanks everybody. <laughs> here on the you know, I think, remember the times when you'd have two uh, VCRs stacked on top of each other? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was more along the lines of, I grew up in that time, so you didn't necessarily have to rent uh, VHSs. However... I do have some favorite VHSs, Joe. All right. Terrific. But you had some VHSs you'd frequently rent, hmm? Yeah, because I lived in a piece of shit small town, and uh, you could rent videos from the local local supermarket. They had like one shelf of videos, so I'd rent those, you know, whatever the fuck it was. And... I think I rented uh, Close Encounters quite a few times because every time I saw it, it was like, hey, this is a super special edition, you know, that you've never seen before. I don't know. I could never tell any difference in it, but I watched it. I liked the movie. It's about little aliens, you know, and toys coming to life in the middle of the night. And it was the same VHS or no? They just kept getting different versions. I think they got kept getting different versions. All right. Uh, one I remember renting that I bought the VHS of was called Smash Cuts. It was like a bunch of different shorts. And this was before, you know, you can go on YouTube and just watch shorts it was kind of like spike and mike shit that would be on there or whatever it was all right i don't know if i'll ever go back and watch it but i remember ah, ah. <laughs> smash cuts terrific i ran in hollywood shuffle more than a few times because it cracked me the fuck up you know um, I don't think Robert Townsend did anything close to this ever. Like, this was really great, really funny. I gotta watch it again to see who wrote most of this shit. Because, uh, I don't know. Maybe, uh, what's his name? Keenan Ivory Wayans was behind it. Because he seemed to be behind everything at that time. But, uh, but yeah, I, I rented this one a lot. And then it finally came out on, uh, HBO when I recorded it. And that VHS was never rented again. Right. <laughs> oh, my number four was a uh, Best of Mr. Bill compilation VHS. All of Mr. Bill's greatest hits that were able to fit on a VHS tape. They sold and marketed. And if you ever saw Mr. Bill, you knew it was the same shit over and over and over. <laughs> ah, fuck. You got the DVDs now, though. 
Uh, I've got Dragon Slayer at number three. The Disney hit Dragon Slayer, Tom. Uh, again, because this was at that uh, supermarket. Not a supermarket. It was a fucking just a grocery store. It was a fucking small grocery store. Fucking probably real dirty and shit, too. But anyway. <laughs> This movie is pretty boring from what I remember, but I would fucking rent it anyway. You know, the dragon at the end of it and at the beginning of it is cool as shit. The dragon looks really, really good, but then the rest of it's like a fucking journey that's boring as shit. Hmm. I, uh, there was this place in, uh, I don't know where it was, but, uh, it was called the Piano Factory Outlet. And I guess it was an old piano factory. They <laughs> turned into outlet stores. But this was like the uh, late 80s, early 90s. So it was just a bunch of fucking bullshit. Uh, the one store I remember like being excited to go into was just like Flop House's random bullshit. Here's a bunch of cups. Here's a bunch of colanders. Here's a bunch of fucking coloring books. Oh, there's a box of VHSs. And uh, I found uh, Pride of the X-Men. You remember that one, Joe? Or Hulk was a Wolver or Hulk was a Wolverine. Jesus Christ. Wolverine was an Australian mate. Yeah. Yeah, that was. Mm. Wasn't this one like a Pizza Hut giveaway? No, those were uh, the first couple episodes of uh, the animated series. This was before the animated series. Okay, yeah, the animation wasn't great, and yeah, Wolverine had that Canuck uh, accent. Oi, mate, I'm a Wolverine, yeah? Oh, shit, that's how Wolverine sounds. All right, cool. <laughs> And I remember Magneto talking like this. <laughs> cool, dude. Was it the time? <laughs> well, you know what? I was never a big fan of that fucking uh, 90s cartoon anyway, or 80s or whatever the fuck it was. Um, and I always wanted an X-Men uh, cartoon. And then when it came out, I was like, eh. But the video game was cool as shit. The one that four people could play? That was based off of Pride of the X-Men, you see. And has your boy, Dazzler, in it. <laughs> At number two, Tom. Uh, it's an animated sci-fi flick called Light Years. What's it about? I don't know. I rented it like maybe six, seven times. Couldn't fucking tell you. I don't remember a thing about it. Just the cover. Number two, I have... Ah. Uh, uh, I have Strangle Mania, Joe. It was a wrestling DVD where the insane clown Patsy stole FMW footage and then they did their commentary over it. It was pretty good. I have the DVD now. Okay. At number one, and this has been on several number one lists, is the movie Excalibur. Mm -hmm. It rented it, rented it until I could buy it. Then I bought that VHS, and then I bought a DVD, and then I bought a Blu ray. I don't have a 4K thing. But, you know, rented it a lot. And the only one that I could actually remember renting it a lot, and, uh, I'm including the sequels in it, too, because fuck it, and that's Faces of Death. 
I'm sure everybody always rented that VHS. And once again, now I have the DVD, which I will probably never, ever watch again. <laughs> but it's in the old library, and that's where it'll sit until I die and somebody throws it the fuck away. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know what the fucking list is going to be for. Uh... So uh, next week, Joe, our list is going to be five ideas for lists. Five. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll have like 10 lists to go forward with. And we won't have to think about shit. That's... I can't wait. Which we do all the time anyway. Let's what? Unless they're repeats of lists we've already done. Oh, well, we've done that before, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Uh, Just later on. Yeah, I'll think of something. Or I won't. Whatever. Hey, everybody. Get fucked. <laughs> She stuck around this long. Thanks. And I'm sorry. I hope you have just a great week full of happiness and joy. Joe, do you have anything to say to these fine, fine people? Uh, I don't know. Keep going, I guess. Like I said before, get fucked. Boy, God.